If you look through the history of the world, you'll find that there are many great civilizations that have crossed its path. Each civilization produced some individuals which reached pinnacles in their profession. And these are the famous people of that particular civilization. So you trace the history of the world and you look through Indian civilization and you find that there were great people in the history of Indian civilization, irrespective of their religion. You trace through the history of the world and you find a great Chinese civilization and you find within them that there were a handful of great people who reached some accolade within their particular profession. Each civilization in their history had some individuals that reached a particular level or depth of perfection. But there is one civilization which over its history continued to produce such individuals and even up until this day continues to produce individuals in every single century, in every single place, and in every single time, and that's the history of Islam. The Islamic civilization is so unique that it's not a handful of individuals, but it's a long list of individuals in so many different fields, in so many different times, in so many different cultures, and in so many different places that became great and performed things which were unique within the history of mankind. Whether it be medicine, whether it be philosophy, whether it be the Arabic language, whether it be the collection of the Quran, the compilation of Hadith, etc. There are incredible individuals within our history. And the list is extensive. It's not a handful. It is an extensive list of individuals who were just incredible in what they did. But there's one factor that differentiates the people of our civilization from the people of any other civilization. And that is the purpose and the sole purpose of the deeds which the people of our civilization performed was the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You look at Chinese civilization, a man decided that he wanted, he wanted to be the first to make a particular, uh, to make a particular invention or to invent something so that he would have the name of being famous for making that particular thing. Or there was a man who reached the pinnacle in a particular aspect of knowledge so that people would remember that he was the one who developed that particular form of knowledge. The difference of Islam in Islamic civilization is that our predecessors, their sole purpose was to raise the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it meant building the biggest masjid that they could, or reaching new accolades in a particular field, or developing something which humanity had yet to experience in each and every occasion, their intention was to raise the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And often we forget this. We go to a masjid, for example in Turkey, which is so beautiful in its architecture, and we get caught up in the building, and we don't realize that the purpose of that man who built that building was because he wanted to raise the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the purpose. That was what drove him to make that building. And that was what drove the individuals who contributed in building that building. The name and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was what drove the individuals in our community. And that's what differentiates them from any other community that has stepped foot on this planet. This is what the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what drove them. Whether it be from the earliest people, or whether it be from the people of the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now within our tradition, despite the fact that we have this list of incredible people, there's one individual that really stands out. There's one individual, now we're putting the prophets aside. There's one individual within our civilization, within our history, who stands out like a giant among giants. And that is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, the famous companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now his eminence is not being established by my words. In fact, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself established the greatness of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. How so? 
Well, look through the narrations of the Prophet On one occasion, the Prophet said, Everything that has been put in my heart, I placed in the heart of Abu Bakr. Yani, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he put in the heart of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. On another occasion, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in front of a group of individuals who had sacrificed their wealth, their time, their desires, their families, their aspirations, imagine the companions upon whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself testified, radiallahu anhum wa radu'an, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them and that they are pleased with Allah. Imagine the sacrifice that they made in order to attain that status in front of this group of people that had sacrificed everything to establish this deen on this planet. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat before them and said, to each of you I have repaid my debt. To every single one of you sitting before me, despite the immense sacrifices that you have made to establish the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this planet, such that it would perpetuate 1400 years later, every single one of your debt has been repaid, except the debt of Abu Bakr radiallahu an, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will repay that. In another hadith, in the book of Imam Bukhari, Aisha radiallahu an has said about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that there was not a day that I can remember that passed upon us, except that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to visit the house of Abu Bakr twice in a day. Imagine, were a great personality of our time to come and visit our house once in our lifetime, we would extol and we would talk to the entire world about who came to visit us. Imagine, imagine if the Prophet ﷺ were to come to your house even once in your lifetime, what that would mean. Yet, the Prophet ﷺ came to the house of Abu Bakr not once, not once in a day, twice every single day. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, were you to take the Iman of Abu Bakr an and place it on one side of a balance, and were you to take the Iman of the rest of the community and place it on another side of a balance, the Iman of Abu Bakr an would outweigh. Our ulama, our scholars, have picked up on two essential characteristics that summarize the life of Abu Bakr an and allow us to take lessons from his, from, his, uh, from his presence. The first is that Abu Bakr was from, um, from, was from among a sabiku and a sabiku. This was the first principle that drove his life. The foremost of the foremost, in every single deed, Abu Bakr put himself at the forefront of that deed. There are two great journeys that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took in his history, in his life. Two journeys. One journey was to Allah, and the other journey was to Medina. One to Allah, which we call the Mi'raj, and one to Medina, which is called the Hijrah. These are the two great journeys that define Islam. 